So I finally decided to take a shot at undervolting my 5800X3D and I feel silly that I haven't done it earlier. Today I'll show you why undervolting the 5800X3D is really worth it and how to do it. Okay, so on the screen right now you can see a screenshot taken while doing a benchmarking test for the 5800X3D in Cinebench R23 for multi-core performance. Take a look at how high the CPU temperature is. It's almost throttling as it reaches close to 90 degrees Celsius. And one more thing, look at the maximum boost frequency for the CPU, just over 4.2 GHz. Now let's have a look at what the temps are after doing a PBO2 offset of minus 30. The temps have fallen significantly, it's hovering around 80-81 degrees Celsius, which is close to 10 degrees lower than before. And look at the frequency, well over 4.3 GHz, very close to 4.4. Now let's have a look at the difference in games. I did a couple of tests for Baldur's Gate and Modern Warfare 2022 and the results are very similar, let me show you. On the left you can see the results before undervolting, on the right is after. What you want to look at is the CPU's average and maximum temperature. On average, the CPU's temperature after testing fell by 3 degrees and maximum temps have fallen by 5 degrees. In Modern Warfare we see similar results, the maximum temperature is lower by 4 degrees and the average temperature is also lower by 4 degrees. And this is really great, especially for anyone running a small form factor PC like me as it can help you reduce the overall heat of the system and work around cooling limitations of SFF PCs. Alright, so now let me show you how to undervolt your 5800X3D or any other CPU for that matter. First, you'll need a CPU monitoring software to make sure the changes you're applying take effect. There's a couple like Hardware Info or Ryzen Master and personally I can recommend the latter one as it has decent user interface and is released directly by AMD. Second, something to benchmark. You could use games, but I think it's too unreliable and the results can't be replicated as easily, so Cinebench is a very good choice. It's easy to use and pretty lightweight. Third thing you'll need is a PBO2 tuner. If you don't want to Google the download, I've left a direct link down in the video description. Just unpack it and leave it for now. Before we apply any undervolting, let's measure your system. Open up Cinebench or any other benchmarking tool you've chosen and open up Ryzen Master. Run a test for a couple of minutes, 3-4 is enough to see the results. I suggest doing a screenshot to have something to refer to. After you've done this, the next step is to turn on PBO2 tuner. Here you can set the offset for each core. Usually 5800X3 doesn't go more than minus 30, but let's start with something safer. I suggest setting it to minus 10 on all cores and running the benchmark again. After a couple of minutes, if everything is fine, you can stop benchmarking, get back to PBO2 and set the offset to minus 20. Run it again. See if it works, and if it does, set it to minus 30. Do the test again. I suggest running it for 10 minutes, and if it's done without any issues, you're done. Now you have an undervolted 5800X3D, but that's not all. There is one more thing you need to do. The disadvantage of this approach is that PBO2 will reset each time you restart your PC and you would need to set the offset manually again. That's not really optimal. So we're going to set a task that automatically starts PBO2 with predefined parameters each time your PC launches or wakes up. So let's start. Right click on your start bar and select computer management. A window will pop up. In that window, select Task Scheduler. On the right, you'll find Create Task, click it. Name it whatever you want, for example, PBO2 Tuner. Next, move to Trigger Stop, create a new trigger. Begin the task at Startup and set it to Enabled. Create another trigger, this time begin the task on an event. Set it to Custom and click New Event Filter. Event Lock should be set to System and Event Source to Power Troubleshooter. In the first row below, set the value to 1 for all users and all computers. Save it. Now go to Actions tab, click New and browse for PBEO2.exe file you have downloaded and used previously. In the Add Argument section, you need to write 8 times minus 30 or any value that was stable while running the test that we did before. Click OK. Now move to Conditions and uncheck all the boxes. Finally, move to Settings and make sure that Allow Task to be Run On Demand is selected. Now set the stop the task if it runs for one hour instead of three days. Finally, make sure if the running task does not end when requested, force it to stop is selected. At the end, from the drop down menu, select Q a new instance. And that's it. Click OK and save. Now you can restart your PC and make sure it works as intended. In order to do that, run the benchmark and see if the results are close to the ones you had on the test run before after we applied the undervolt. 
If it is, it means you're all good. If not, I suggest checking if the task has been configured properly or maybe you missed something. Now each time your PC turns on or wakes up, it will automatically apply the PBO to adjustments. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Laser and I'll see you in the next video.